Hello and welcome to the program. Now, the war against insurgency is gradually winding up with the decimation of uh, terrorist hideouts across the northeast of the country, especially the capture of Sambisa Forest in the northeast uh, Borno state. Although there have been a handful of bombings here and there, the army has said it is expected as a sign of the last battle of the drowning insurgents. Now, with Boko Haram on the run and the new understanding being struck by government and the militants in the Niger Delta region, the country seems to be returning to the path of peace, which will guarantee economic recovery. At least that is expected. It is no wonder the Minister of State for Petroleum, Ibe Kachuku, said recently that Nigeria can achieve 3 million barrels per day oil output in 2017. Of course, that is if the peace in the Niger Delta holds. Now, the Nigerian Customs Service last week made a shocking breakthrough, intercepting arms imported into the country through the seaport. Now, the guns, 661 pump action rifles, were reportedly imported into the country from China illegally. They were packed in 40 boxes and concealed with steel and other merchandise goods in a 40 feet container. The Controller General of Customs, Colonel Hamid Ali, retired, who made the declaration in Lagos, said the weapons had been cleared and had left the port, but Customs undercover agents on receipt of useful information went after the truck. He said the detectives from the Federal Operations Unit Zone A Ikeja intercepted the container at Mile 2 area of Lagos. Already three people, including the importer of the consignment, have been arrested. Some officials of the Customs Service were also arrested in connection with the consignment. Now, this development has uh, once again put Nigerians on the edge. While many who feel security challenges are beginning to come to an end, uh, now having some kind of rethink. Can he be the handwork uh, of the insurgents? Where will this arms uh, would have been going to? Or is it just arms dealers who are looking for buyers in Africa? These are many questions agitating the minds of Nigerians. And of course, we'll try to look at those questions and see if we can provide an answer to them. I have uh, joining me here in the studio, Imo Jonathan, who is a public affairs analyst and uh, our in-house uh, security expert, Colonel Hassan Stan Labo, uh, a retired military officer. Gentlemen, thank you very much for coming on the uh, program. Let me start with you, Colonel. Um, quite, quite shocking that this would happen. But it's also shocking that these items actually left the ports. I mean, and that the items left the port had gotten to mile two before the customs intercepted. And you have customs at the ports there. How, the, the, how could these items have left the port without any detection? And that it took a, a tip off for uh, the customs to be able to intercept this uh, container now at around mile two area. Yeah, thank you, Deji. I think it's a clear-cut indication of uh, connivance between our customs, who we place our confidence on mm. to be able to clear the right goods for us, and of course, these criminals who are out there, you know, uh, importing these things illegally. And I want to let you know something, Deji. Um, things like this, for somebody to have the confidence to bring it in through the port, yeah, not, it not means a real thing. arrangement has exactly. been done. Otherwise, most of these things coming through our land borders, borders. not our water, uh, water borders, through our land borders. Because, I mean, when you talk of the land borders, there are several ways in which they come in. I mean, I've worked in the course of operations. This individual is very so. bold. Uh, yes. Not just bold, there is a serious, tidy up arrangement. When you see a blow up like this in most cases, it is because of one problem or the other. And what are usually the problems? Maybe somebody is feeling dissatisfied somewhere and so on. Otherwise, this is the one we know of. Do you know how many may have passed? And money exchanging hands? Imo, tell, me how, tell, tell me how you felt. I mean, looking at those pictures. <laughs> when, you saw, when you saw those ah. pictures, just tell me how you felt. Because for me, I was... I was really, really scared. Uh, honestly, it tells you there is something fishy. A lot of things are going underneath in this country. Uh, that explains to you that the bombings in the Niger Delta, that the killings in Kaduna, 
and even the still resistance being put up by the Boko Haram, in spite of territories being recovered by them, is not ordinary. It also tells you that the intricate challenges we are going through in this country, certain characters and high-profile elements are involved. The challenges Nigeria faces is not ordinary. At the time, a group of people gathered money and started buying goods, you know, agricultural products from north and started shipping out of Nigeria in order to create food scarcity. There are dangerous elements, the word intent and purpose, you don't know where they're driving. Are they trying to create war? And I can assure you that some countries, uh, police force does not have that kind of sophisticated weapon. Putting 661 of such in together with uniform means you can overrun certain states in this country. country. You can overrun certain states in this country. I imagine if this has been happening, we don't know what locations they are. It makes me fear for Nigeria. It makes me think there is something more we should be very more careful to, you know, think deeply about because some things are going on. From, 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 it's from it's characters are bent or destroying Nigeria, there may also, there's likelihood of international connivance. Because before arms are sold, there must be what they call a clearance from the country of origin. And if there had not been any clearance, how many of these also left the port of the country of origin? Who did it? How did it go that, out that, of the that, country? And that's a point. Maybe international collaboration to destroy Nigeria is coming to the fore. Or either the elements in Nigeria conniving with outsiders to destroy Nigeria, their machinations are coming to a bit of uh, you know, to light. That is uh, what we're uh, going uh, on here. Uh, Connell, I mean, if, if my director can just show us the full view, let's take a look at those weapons now. Uh, t tell me, I mean, looking at those weapons now, there you have them. T tell me what you feel. I mean, you look at the sophisticated, you know, the sophistication of these weapons. They are, they are all new weapons, hmm. very new, brand new, and um, it, it, it's quite scary. Deja, right. as a professional, I tell you, these are brand new weapons hmm. that can completely bring down a nation. Thank God for the size of Nigeria. But you see all these small countries around us? It doesn't take... Because this is about the size of a military unit about 600 and something weapons. It's about the size of a military unit. An infantry unit, standard, is about 800 plus. An armored unit is about 600 plus. That's it. Imported through illicit trade by an individual. And, and, and as you said, I mean, you, you rightly pointed out, it came in through the sea borders, not, not yes. through, no, not through, through, the, through land. the land borders. Yes. Anything that comes in through the sea borders or air, air border, that is airport, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, what's it called? Those are movements that are well tied up. Well tied up. It is the land borders that are so porous that uh, you, 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 you don't, all you need to do is tie up with one medoki and he buries it inside his bags of rice and moves it across and so on. Mm -hmm. And you know, this one might take about 20 something moves. Or if you hire more hands to do the job, nearly every truck you see passing through your borders with all your northern uh, neighbors to the northeast and so on. If you search most of them, you have arms and ammunition buried in them, pistols, whatever you think. And that's why we cry out that, look, it is important that those that man our borders are well equipped with detectors and so other forms of sensors that can pick out these things immediately. I, 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 the Customs uh, Controller General has ordered that uh, henceforth every container that th there must be 100% inspection of containers. Uh, in, in the past, it was not the case. Uh, but, but beyond that, what, what do you expect to see happen? Because, okay. I mean, something has to be done about this. Uh, for, for every hard problem, there is always a soft end. The soft end of the problem from which you can solve the hard problem. What every society must realize in solving any society's problem, they are all is, uh, located in four dimensions. It's either people who do these things out of, they do out of uh, uh, hostility, apathy, prejudice, or they are ignorant. So now you have order for what 100% special, a good policy, but for which Nigerians that are going some, to some suffer. Some people will tell you, yes, going to suffer delays. Down. You're going to suffer delays at the port. And this is Nigerians who have been given this privilege before are now featuring this goodwill, which is also coming back to mm -hmm. us to say to us that some of these times when governments suffer to people is out of our own reactions to some of these goodwill policies that we have had before. Now, for you to do this 
every time that you have a 40 feet, 20 feet container coming for different purposes and different kinds of goods, that's going to cut, uh, cause, cut, uh, uh, put congestion, delay, demorage, logistics costs going to increase, and those are going to be the effect of it. But the issue is because now there is fear, and we need to secure the nation first. If that is the price you have to pay, you have to pay. But beyond that, the biggest undermining and the biggest challenge here is the character of individuals who man the spot. We have, in Nigeria, the, these elements who work in custom, immigration and police, they are the true leaders and owners of society, but they don't have this mentality. mentality. They don't have patriotic zeal. They don't have nationalistic view of their job. They don't know that this society actually belongs to them, not politicians. Politician. You see a policeman digging you. 100,000 by a politician to obstruct a process that will lead to what they call a whole, that will hold gamut of issues that will create problems in society. And that is a politician who a policeman can throw in jail. A custom official who allows this to come in and gets 2 million may think he's rich now, but who knows who the gun will kill? You understand me? They That's don't true. know how this it comes back to us. So the, at the bottom of all these problems we are facing in Nigeria is ignorance. So when you look at it in the first strata of society's problem, society's problem, the biggest problem in Nigeria is ignorance. Ignorance of they cannot make the connection between these failed expectations of citizens and the failed uh, producing, the unproductive and inept and corrupt activities of custom officials. So yes, you still have to, uh, even though with former policies, these same custom officials who have allowed these goods to pass true. are still in the custom. Customs. You see a custom official, who, a young man who has just gone into custom three years, four years, he has a big ass, he has a big car. And nobody is asking questions, how much is his salary? If you go to the land borders, you see, you talk about smuggling, there are no smuggling without connivance of the custom officials. They even give them information when the strike force is going to come check the roads. They know. So they keep telling you that ah, the road is not clear. How do they know? Somebody inside who does not have mm. patriotic nationalistic view of the job he's doing, who has no what they call leadership perspective about his job, who does not know that he's a leader in his right, that his job is to protect and to govern this country from the rank of an office he, he occupies. Mm. So the man who does not understand that gives opportunity, leaves Nigeria poros, and the next is that they keep Kills his friend, kills his associate, his village man, he does not know how he comes back to, he cannot make the connection. Mm. In all of this, what are we looking for? Everybody is driven by common greed, cheap greed. You want to drive big car to impress people who don't love you. You just want to show up that you have arrived, mm -hmm. that you are now a big boy. That is why you can undermine the security of your nation in order to drive Prado, to drive Lexus, to then wear a bad and show that mm. you're a big man. And after all of that, you are buried six feet under the ground. That is the end that's, of your story. No, with nothing. <laughs> that's the end. So it is the ignorance, both of those who are perpetrating it and those who want to, who, who are conniving with them to do it. If we are ignorant, we know that. This value for human life is yeah. the most exceptional value, value for which we must all pursue. And that is when society gets its bearing. Colonel, what are, what are the key questions you'll expect uh, the customs authority to begin to ask? Because uh, at some point we understand, uh, we heard some of the customs officers who were actually involved in the clearing of uh, that good. Uh, of course, uh, the controller general at some point even mentioned it that uh, actually two officers um, were responsible, actually signed the documents, but that beyond those two officers, he was going beyond them to look at all the officers on duty that day and, uh, you know, a, a chain of officers. But what are the key questions as the customs investigates this? What are those key questions you'll be expecting them to ask? First and foremost, maybe I should start with this. Deji, I know sometimes back we had these inspection companies. I may not be right in the terminologies I'm using. But we had these companies abroad that were supposed to inspect do, imports. Yes, des they do destination inspection. Uh, thank you. I think that's the right uh, word. What is their job if they cannot detect things like this? Or is it that they're not positioned in every country? I wouldn't know. I don't know how these things function. But I was thinking that nearly every import that comes into our country is being inspected by these companies. And I know we we'll pay a lot for it, for the service. What is going on wrong? Is it that they too are part of the entire dragnet? We must look in that direction too. Fine, coming back to what you were saying. That one person has signed and that, that cleared, move it, does not mean that the rest of them who are on duty are not aware that that load, some, don't, that load don't come or that don't clear. some that are not on duty. Yes, and some that are not on duty. 
and just waiting mm. to see, make sure it passes. Yes, good. And then they move on. So it's a matter of you not just picking those two guys, but the entire team that were on duty, you move them. Separate them completely from one another and then start your investigations. Okay? We should ask far more questions to these guys when they begin to open up. Who are those behind this? Because some of these small boys there might not be, what would they be uh, importing 600 and something weapons for? There are politicians behind this. 2019 is fast approaching. Uh, politicians who are looking for weapons, they will give to these small boys again and arm them, and at the end, you cannot collect the weapons and again. The and weapon problems again will uh, start, just like we have. Yes. We have militias everywhere, uh, mm -hmm. south, south, and so on. All these are areas where some of these weapons will go into. So when you are asking questions, you mention some of all these places. And let the man know this guy knows what he's saying. Maybe he's even aware that I want to move this weapon to South South or I want to move it to social politician in the North. So he begins to op op open up for you and so on. We have lots of avenues where these weapons will be of use because I'm sorry to say in the last 10 or 12 years, our country has virtually been in war. So that we have not declared a war. If it's not IPOP today, it is uh, these boys in the South South tomorrow or uh, Masop is saying this or, or Boko, Boko Haram is there, all sorts. Metesine. So there are avenues where these weapons can be moved into. The driver should tell us where he was headed to before he was stopped in my two. You can't be driving a vehicle without knowing where you are going to. Where was your destination? Which your guy house should they take and go? Because and they bury it on the ground mm. in most of these houses. Most of these politicians have underground warehouses in their house where they bury things like this. It's, it's shocking. So we must, it must be a far, far, far reaching investigation that will dig out a lot. And I hope it will not just end where it is. And of course, I hope the customs will, ca will actually carry Nigerians along and you they, make this. They should. And also, they, I want to say they were hasty. And on, uh, not just the customs. In recent times, I've noticed both the DS, uh, DSS, yes. EFCC, some of these security agencies. Security work is more of a discreet job yeah. than seeking public, uh, this, uh, uh, what you call it, uh, you want to gain visibility. No. Mm. You should do a little more detailed work before yes. you come to public to announce it. Discreet. Imagine that the day you are arrested, the container you announced it, two officers are already on the run. Yes, then yes. the re-corporate, maybe who was living in Nigeria, has found his way out of Nigeria. Mm. And then tomorrow he begins to say, oh, before we got to him, this kind of job, once you have dictated, is that you can also play along. Mm. You follow the driver, get to the destination, allow them to discharge the goods, but you already know what is in it. So you can, you know, expand your drug rate into the main destination with, with evidential proof that this is mm. where it's going to. And when you do a little more, keep it quiet when you get a tip, you would have gone far before the enemy would realize you're on their trail. So a lot of this DSS, S, uh, EFCC, and all of them, in recent times, once they make an arrest, they announce. Without making thorough investigation, you begin to allow the companies the opportunity to close their tracks. I don't like that. You don't need to impress anybody with, oh, we have arrested one container. Yeah. There are something deeper than this. You arrest a container. That is just the person who have arrested it and pulled it successfully from the wharf mm -hmm. has been doing some more dirty jobs. That is why the yeah. confidence level increased to 40 feet that container. Yeah. Yes. Right. So you should be able to have yes. taken enough discrete measures to gather this thing, even follow up on these people, even the custom officials, they wouldn't know you are even investigating yes. them. Yes. That is the purpose for investigation. Until we even get to outside the country, the source. Exactly, the source. Then you can be able to follow up and then put the ship, a shipping line, the clearing agent, the forwarding agent, and the other people that handle the cargo it, it, from it, 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 It's quite unfortunate what we would do just to, to make money. And hmm. as you said, I mean, you never know where these guns will be used yeah, and sure, who sure. it will be it's used exactly, to kill. I mean, exactly. it's, it's just, sure. We'll take a short break, and when we come back, we'll be talking about uh, the, tax, uh, the new tax policy now that the government has decided to introduce. 
Every day, every hour, and every minute, news break in Nigeria. Things happen so fast, it's most times difficult to track and comprehend them. But that's what we do right here on DJ360. 2015, would you want to come back again? It's like asking Jesus Christ if he knew he was going to die, will you, come, will you want to come back as the savior of the world again? We do not just help you track the stories, we break them down. Explore all the angles, analyze the issues so that you can fully comprehend the stories and use them to make the right decisions.